Hello, everybody. You're listening to Let's Master English, and my name is Coach Shane. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Let's Master English, the podcast. This is podcast number 56. It is November 4th, 2015. I am your English coach. Coach Shane, it's so nice to be with you again. Now, I need to say a special get well to one of our listeners, Megumi Kano. I hope my pronunciation is okay. Uh, she lives in Japan, and she's going to be in the hospital for a week. She might be out now, but she's going to be recovering in bed for several weeks. Megumi, I hope that the procedure went well. I hope that you are feeling good. I hope that you are recovering fast. And I hope that soon you're going to be on your feet, running around, and uh, having a good time very, very soon. So, Megumi, get well fast. And I'm sure that everybody else listening is thinking the same thing. So do that, Megumi. Now, we have another question here. I need to make this a little bit bigger, my screen. The letter is actually from one of my DDM students, and uh, he wants to cancel his DDM membership. <laughs> but the reason, the reason, the reason is he has to go to the army. Oh, boy. Yeah. Some countries have mandatory military service. You have to go to the army. You have no choice. So... Uh, well, I'm wishing you the best of luck. He'll be in the Army for one year. Now, he understands that I was in the Army, and he wants to know why. Why did I go? What did I do? Did I have a good time? Uh, yeah, so I'll go ahead and ask, answer that question. I went to the Army. I signed up, actually, a long time ago, in 1985. Can you believe it? 30 years ago, my goodness. That's when I signed up. And I went to the Army in 1986. The reason I went to the Army was because at that time, they were giving lots of money to soldiers if they went to school full time. So the idea was I joined the Army for two years, full time duty, active duty for two years. And then when I get out of the Army, and I go to college, university, the army will give me money while I'm in college to pay for school. So it's kind of like a scholarship. That's why I did it. My dad worked and paid for his college on his own. His parents didn't pay. So I wanted to do the same thing. It was uh, kind of a pride, I guess you could say. So yeah, I was in the army for two years the army sent me to South Korea after my basic training and my schooling. I was trained in communications. The communication systems that I used are no longer, they're really old systems, so they don't use them anymore. I was a rat rig operator, if anybody knows what that is. Anyway, um, so yeah, uh, the army sent me to Korea. And I wasn't excited about going to Korea, but I went, and that changed my life completely. Uh, I started my actual first English class in 1987, and since 1987, I've basically been a teacher, an English coach, and I've loved it. And uh, that experience in the Army has created who and what I am today. So I was lucky I didn't go to any conflicts in the world. Uh, I didn't go to any wars. Uh, I'm not pro-war at all. But yeah, that was my military career. So anyway, thank you very much for, the, for the, the question. And good luck in the military. I hope that you stay safe. I'm not going to tell the country or where this person is, but uh, he is in a country that does get involved in international conflicts. So I hope that he stays safe and that uh, his experience in the military is similar to mine, a good positive experience. What did I learn in the military? I'll tell you this. I learned how to be responsible and how to keep a schedule. Uh, if you commit 
to something, if you make a promise to somebody, you have to carry it through. And that's what I learned. I also learned how important education is. Because if you don't have much education um, and you become a boss, even a low-level boss, the people below you who do have an education are not going to respect you. So I understood uh, that education is very important. It's not the most important thing. Of course not. Uh, but it is important. So yeah, that's what I learned. Enough chit chat. It's time to get into the LME news. Less than a second. When meeting someone for the first time, it takes most people a tenth of a second to decide whether or not they can trust the person. That's that long. Straight or gay? A twentieth of a second. Actually, we pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. Clean glasses, smart. Tattoos, party boy. Head down, weak. Wearing name brands, quality person. Bald and fit, alpha male. How do you represent yourself? Oh, ho, so this is a news. It's a... Uh, interest news story. It's about some research and it's actually really surprising research. Uh, we all know that we, there's an expression in English to judge a book by its cover. We go to the bookstore, we look at the cover of a book and many people decide it's a good book or it's a boring book. Okay, so we do that. We know that we do that. Uh, but this is a little bit more scientific and, wow, it's like we make decisions really, 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 really fast. Really fast. Listen again. I'll read the story a little bit more slowly. Less than a second. When meeting someone for the first time, it takes most people a tenth of a second to decide whether or not they can trust the person. That's that long. Straight or gay? A twentieth of a second. Actually, we pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. Clean glasses? Smart. Tattoos, party boy, head down, weak. Wearing name brands, quality person, bald and fit, alpha male. How do you represent yourself? So whether you like it or not, your image how you show yourself to other people will affect how they think of you. It's true. So this is always a dilemma for me because personally, I hate worrying about how I look. I don't care about clothes. I don't care about hair. I don't care about shaving. I don't even brush my... No, that's not true. Uh, so, so there are some English teachers on YouTube who always look good wearing a suit, wearing a nice shirt. And a couple weeks ago, one of my YouTube watchers left a message saying, oh, you and I have something in common. I also do not like to iron clothes. <laughs> so the message was... My shirt was very wrinkly and it needed ironing. And yes, I did not iron my clothes. My shirt was not too cool. But I need to worry about this. So I'm serious. I'm thinking next year, 2016, what should I do? Maybe I'll uh, start a new image, a new image of me, a cleaner, nicer 
image. What do you think? I don't know. I don't know. So anyway, let's go ahead. And, and this is the question. How do you represent yourself? How do you show yourself? Let's go ahead and look at each sentence line by line. Less than a second. Okay, that's the title. Less, L-E-S-S, than, T-H-A-N. Now be careful, everybody. T-H-E-N and T-H-A-N. When we say it quickly in daily English, they sound the same. Less than a, less than a, less than a, less than a second. I went to the store, then I went to my mom's. I went to the store, then I went to my mom's. Less than a second, less than a second. You're really not going to hear the difference. We can pronounce them differently than T-H-E-N, then, eh, eh, N, then, 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 T-H-A-N, and, then, 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 then. Then, than. Yes, we can pronounce them differently, but in daily English, T-H-A-N usually sounds the same as T-H-E-N, then, then. Less than a, less than a second. S-E-C-O-N-D. If you have a watch, your watch will show the hour, the minute, and the second. If you look right now, I don't have my watch on. Uh, oh well, too bad. I'll look at my computer. It is 1 o'clock, that's the hour, 57 minutes, that is, oh, 58. It's 58 minutes and 00 seconds. It just changed, okay? So, second, second, less than a second. First sentence, when meeting someone for the first time, that's easy, when meeting someone. In America, we don't say meeting, we say meeting, that's a flap T. When meeting someone for the first time, time first time connect the t sounds first time first time also listen carefully for the first time if we say it quickly we say for the first time when meeting someone for the first time when meeting someone for the first time when meeting someone for the first time it takes most people a tenth of a second it takes, TT, connect the T's, first time, first time, it takes, it takes. It takes most people. In this situation, many Americans will actually cancel the T, and you'll hear this. Most people, most people, most people, most people, a tenth of a second, a tenth, T-E-N-T-H, that's one slash ten. So 1 slash 1 is 1 over 1 is 1. 1 slash 2 is 1 half. 1 slash 10 is 1 tenth. A tenth. 1 tenth, the same thing, a tenth. A tenth of a second. So in this case, it takes most people 1 tenth of 1 second. It takes most people a tenth of a second to do what? What requires a tenth of a second? To decide whether or not they can trust the person. <gasps> wow. So you see a guy, let's say you're walking down the street and boom, you see a person in a tenth of a second, you are able to decide whether or not you can trust the person. So think about this. You're walking down the street and you want to ask for directions. Oh, which way to the bank? Some people, when they talk to you, you know you can believe them. And some people, you're not sure. Well, that decision on whether you can trust the person can happen within a tenth of a second. Now, how long is a tenth of a second? And when we write that down, it's snaps, fingers, snaps, S-N-A-P-S, fingers. Okay, so I'm using, my, I'm using my thumb and my middle finger to make that sound. Some people use their first finger. I can't get a good snap. Some people use their fourth finger. I'm terrible. Me, the middle finger. Okay, that snaps finger that long. That is that long. How long is a tenth of a second? Like that. Really super, super, super fast. So we make uh, a decision on whether or not we trust a person 
within a tenth of a second. Now, other than trust, what about if the person is straight or gay? Straight means heterosexual. If it's a guy, he likes women. If it's a woman, she likes men. That's straight. Gay, for most people, you would think of men, men liking men. But actually, we can use gay to describe women, too. Well, there is the word gay and lesbian, specifically gay for men, lesbian for women, homosexuals. Uh, however, gay can just mean homosexual, too. So in this case, it means homosexual. Straight or gay, a twentieth of a second. Oh, my goodness. So a tenth of a second... I can trust you, or I do not trust you. <laughs> Straight or gay, even quicker, a 20th of a second. Oh yeah, he's gay. Oh yeah, he's straight. <laughs> That's amazing. Is that really true? My goodness. Maybe, I guess it is. They did research. That's what they say. Yeah. So the next sentence. Actually, we pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. So we don't just judge. And what does it mean to judge? To judge means to make a decision, to decide A or B. I can trust this person or I can't trust this person. This person is a nice person. This person is a bad person. This person is straight or this person is gay. To judge somebody or something. You can judge a movie. I think that movie was good. I think that movie was bad. So to judge basically means to be a critic. Okay, to make an opinion, to give an opinion on something. And basically, we make an opinion about other people in a tiny fraction of time. And is that fair? That's not fair. Can you imagine going to a job interview and walking into the interview? Hi, my name is Shane Peterson. And then the guy says, Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> because in that two seconds, hi, my name is Shane Peterson. Two seconds, boom. That employer, that boss, he completely judged me and said uh, yes or no. Is that fair? It is not fair. It's not fair. But that's what humans do. So we pretty much, in this case, pretty much means basically. Basically, we basically fully, F-U-L-L-Y, completely judge, make an opinion, judge people, make an opinion on people in a tiny, super, super small fraction, small amount. A fraction is greater than zero, less than one. So one over two, one half, that's a fraction. One tenth is a fraction. One twentieth is a fraction. We pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. So what are some other things that help us judge? Well, if the person is wearing glasses, and I, I do wear glasses, spectacles, eyeglasses. Well, if you see a person wearing glasses, and if those glasses are clean, not dirty, you think the person is smart, usually. Clean glasses, smart. Tattoos. What are tattoos? T-A-T-T-O-O-S, tattoos. Tattoos are those, you know, artwork stuff on your skin. It's permanent. And I think in many, many countries, who has tattoos? Those tough guys, you know, gangsters, some of uh, the sports stars, maybe the soccer players, uh, or maybe the rock and roll guys. Yeah. Well, in America, I'm a little bit disappointed. They're super common. So many people have tattoos. If you have a tattoo, that's fine. Me, no tattoos. But, but, but in America, if we, and not me, but the average American, if they see a person with a tattoo, people think, party boy. Party boy, P-A-R-T-Y, 
boy, B-O-Y. What is a party boy? Somebody who likes to party, to drink, to dance, to have a good time. Uh, party boy is going to like party girls. Party girls are going to like party boys. They're going to, you know, you know, you know, whatever, you know? If you see somebody and their head is down, you know, they're looking down, it's their, their shoulder, you know, they, they, they just look like they're sad or thinking or weak. That's what we think. If your head is down, we think you are weak. W-E-A-K, not strong. Hmm. Head down. Put the D's together. Head down. If we see you and we recognize that you are wearing nam, I'm sorry, name brands, wearing clothes, name, N-A-M-E dash B-R-A-N-D-S, name brands, those are custom labels like Armani and Chanel, uh, what else, Polo, I can't think of anything else, I don't know any name brands, yeah, name brands, Chanel, <laughs> that's all I know, Armani, anyway, if you are wearing name brands, people are going to think you're a quality person. What does a quality person mean? Somebody with high education or lots of money. Somebody with a high status. S-T-A-T-U-S. Good education, good job, good family, good money. They're going to think you're a good person. If you are bald and fit. B-A-L-D. Bald. No hair. Michael Jordan, Bruce Willis. And fit, F-I-T. This means healthy, physically healthy. So if you're bald and fat, no. <laughs> but if you're bald and fit, people are going to think you are an alpha male. Alpha male, A-L-P-H-A, -A, male, M-A-L-E. What is an alpha male? An alpha male is those leadership guys. Powerful guys. You know, the big guy always in command. He's the leader. We'll be a CEO. This type of guy. In the last sentence. How do you represent yourself? How do you present yourself? How do you show yourself? When you go out, how do people see you? Are you clean? Are you bald? Are you fat? Are you dressed nicely? Do people think you're gay? Do people think you're smart <laughs> what do you do is there is there a way that you can change your appearance so that people might have a different first impression now once again are first impressions fair no they're not first impressions are many times wrong but there's a reason we have first impressions. It's because usually, on average, they're correct. Not always, but usually. Don't judge a book by its cover. Well, actually, if a good book gets published by a good publishing company, the publishing company will invest a lot of money in the book cover. So it tends to look really good. So judging a book by its cover, making a judgment on somebody the first time you see them is not a good thing. But it's something we do as humans. So since there's nothing we can do, then maybe we should try our best to make a good first impression. Let's check out these vocabulary words. Snaps, fingers, making a noise by quickly pressing and moving your fingers. In my case, the middle finger and thumb. Straight, S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T, not gay. Coach Shane is straight. If you thought I was gay, Sorry. Why did you think I was gay? Oh, shut up. I am so not gay. My goodness. And to the gay listeners, sorry about that. <laughs> gay, G-A-Y. Uh, in this case, I'm using it just to mean homosexual. 
Uh, and once again, gay does refer specifically in America, maybe the UK, I don't know, to uh, men, homosexual men. Fully, F-U-L-L-Y, completely judge, J-U-D-G-E, to judge somebody. The J and the G have the same pronunciation, don't they? Judge, to make an opinion on something. You like it or you don't like it, for example. Tiny, T-I-N-Y. Super, 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 super small. Fraction. A fraction. Greater than zero and less than one. Tattoos. T-A-T-T-O-O-S. The colored, usually colored, sometimes just black. The colored designs and words people have painfully put into their skin. Yeah. Party boy. A boy man who likes to party and that means to have <clears throat> too much fun drinking dancing and that 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 name brands expensive labels fashion labels armani chanel uh fendi ooh yeah fendi yeah that's it levi's <laughs> i don't think levi's are there Champion? I like champion. Uh, quality. Quality. A quality person. He's a quality person. In this case, I'm using it as high status. S-T-A-T-U-S. We have two pronunciations, status and status. Both are fine. A high status person, a quality person, means they probably have one or more of the following. Good education, good job, good family, Good money. Good education, Harvard University. Good job, investment banker. Good family, related to the Kennedys. Good money, rich, rich, rich. Yeah, if you're a quality person, it doesn't mean you're, you know, the best of the best. It just means you're a high quality, good quality person. Coach Shane, I went to a good university, University of Minnesota. Uh, good job? Yeah, I got my own job. Got my own business. Good family? Good mom and dad. <laughs> good money? Uh, <laughs> no, but I'm still good. I said a com it could be one or more. Okay, bald, B-A-L-D. Having no hair. Now, I have hair, but I am balding. Some guys in my situation shave their head. Fit. And if they shave their head, they look bald. Fit, F-I-T, in good physical shape. Alpha male, a dominant, powerful, leadership-laden man. That's what an alpha male is. Use your dictionary. Leadership-laden, L-A-D-E-N. What does laden mean? That's a good word. Use your dictionary. Do some research. Let's listen to the news two more times. The first time, I'm going to read it nice and smoothly. The second time, normal speed. Are you ready? Less than a second. When meeting someone for the first time, it takes most people a tenth of a second to decide whether or not they can trust the person. That's that long. Straight or gay? A twentieth of a second. Actually, we pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. Clean glasses? Smart. Tattoos? Party boy. Head down? Weak. Wearing name brands? Quality person. Bald and fit? Alpha male. How do you represent yourself? Less than a second. When meeting someone for the first time, it takes most people a tenth of a second to decide whether or not they can trust the person. That's that long. Straight or gay, a twentieth of a second. Actually, we pretty much fully judge people in a tiny fraction of time. Clean glasses, smart. Tattoos, party boy. Head down, weak. Wearing name brands, quality person, bald and fit, alpha male. How do you represent yourself? How you doing, everybody?
everybody, this is Country Shane, and I'm here to bring you the facts. In life, one of the most powerful things you can do if you want people to take you seriously, <clears throat> stand up straight, keep your shoulders back, and look straight ahead. Posture means power. This has been Country Shane bringing you the facts. There you go. Yeah, it's a fact. It's a scientific fact. People who stand up straight, people who keep their shoulders back, not crazy back, not like a, a I don't know, who, who keeps their shoulders back too much, not like a, a, a model, but just normal back. Keep your shoulders straight and look straight ahead. Don't look down. Don't look up. Look straight ahead. If you stand up straight, if you keep your shoulders back, keep your shoulders straight, and look straight ahead, people are going to take you more seriously. If you stand up not straight, you know, kind of bent over. If your shoulders kind of bend in and bend down. If you're looking down or if you're looking up, 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 up. People are going to think, yeah, whatever. Uh, this guy is nothing. Yeah, don't worry about him. But once again, the opposite. Uh, keep yourself straight. And once again, posture means power. It's true. So if you want to give a presentation, if you when you walk down the street, if you meet somebody for the first time, if you're going to a job interview, remember, posture means power. Okay? And make yourself look good. Smile. Clean yourself. <laughs> Wash your hair. Brush your teeth. And have good posture people are going to really take you seriously. It's true. It sounds so simple and easy, but it's true. It's question and answer time. My first question comes from Claudia. I'm Claudia. I'm from China. I really appreciate your daily English expression podcast. I've been listening to it for about six months. It helps me learn a lot of slang and it is inspiring me to make a Chinese podcast. So thank you very, very, very much. So cutting to the chase, what I really want to learn or what I really want to do is make a podcast. I want to make a Chinese custom and language, specifically slang, podcast, so that I can help foreigners learn English just like you are doing with your daily easy English expression. So, can you give me some advice, make some suggestions? Can you talk about your experience? Well, Claudia, uh, thank you very much. I'm so happy that I'm inspiring you to make a podcast. It's my great honor. Um, yeah, and you know what? I think a lot of people would love to learn the Chinese language, to learn some expressions, and to learn about the customs. I think it's a great idea. So a couple of things that are going to be very important. Number one, pronunciation. You really need to make sure your pronunciation is as clean as possible. That's not easy, so I recommend slowing down when you speak, especially when you're teaching a Chinese expression. Okay? So keep your pronunciation very clear and easy for people to repeat. Repeating is very important. Number two, I recommend, especially in the beginning, to keep your podcasts short and simple. Don't do too many things. Just focus on one word or one expression. Or focus on one thing about Chinese custom. Keep it short and simple. And I'm talking like between three and five minutes is excellent. Once you have a lot of listeners, once you start getting good feedback, 
Then you can make a longer podcast, but in the beginning, short and simple and give value. Every time, give value. And number three, I'll give you one more piece of advice, consistent. Make sure that it is consistent. So if you have a new podcast once a week or every day or once a month, make it consistent. Make a promise with your listeners that every week, Tuesday, or every month on the 1st, or every day at 10 p.m., you're going to do your podcast. In the beginning, it is so important that you do that. So those are three, I think, very good piece of, pieces of advice uh, for you, and uh, I wish you the best of luck. It sounds really cool. Keep us posted on how you do, okay? Thanks a lot for the question, Claudia. Now, we have one more question. This question is from Nano Ben. I hope my pronunciation is okay. Hi, Coach. I have a question for you. Please tell me when to use this or that when referring to an idea or a subject in a conversation. Should I say, this was brilliant or that was brilliant? I did some research on the internet but they're all talking about distance. Really? Do I have to bring a measuring stick and measure the distance? <laughs> I'm counting on you to make this more clear for me, to make this clearer for me. Thank you in advance. I'm feeling confused. Uh, it's a great question, this or that, and lots of people are confused. Do I say this or that? This is a good idea. Okay, so if you wanna say this is a good idea, the idea that somebody gave was right now. And you can say, this is a good idea. Not this was a good idea. This is a good idea. Because when we talk about this, it is something right here. And when we say here, here has two meanings. It can mean here as in location, but it can also mean here as in now. So this is Present tense, a great idea. This is a great meal. This is my coffee. Everything is here in front of you. You can still touch it. You can still smell it. The echo, 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 echo is still here. That was a good idea. Something has finished. It is past tense. It could be 30 seconds. It could be three years. It could be, uh, location-wise, a distance away. That was a good movie, the movie we saw yesterday. That was a good idea. That idea you mentioned a minute ago, that was a good idea. That is my coffee. That coffee located by you, not by me, by you, distance-wise, that is my coffee. So once again, it is about distance. But remember, distance, using the word here and there. Here means now. Here means we can hear it, we can touch it, we can smell it. The echo is still here. In that case, this. There is like that. It's in the past. It was it is located further away. Okay? Does that make sense? I hope so. Now, what you guys need to do is you need to make some example sentences and then look for it. See if you can figure out what is the right expression to use. This or that. Once again, this is super, super common. This was? Mm, no. That is is okay. If we want to separate, if we want to put distance, that was very, very common. Okay? I hope that makes some sense. Thanks for the questions, guys. Keep those questions coming in. This week in LME, this is what we did over the past week, almost two weeks now since I did the last podcast. 
So, we had a great time. Uh, DDM 265. It was a story about the best hamburgers in the United States. McDonald's. Sorry. McDonald's was voted the worst. And we had a really excellent discussion about what represents your country. So, my DDM students sent in MP3 files. Prashant from India said, Spirituality was a big thing. That represents India. Perfect, perfect. For Russia, Alex told us Matrushka dolls and samovars. Yes. Nikolai said not vodka. Yes, Russians like to drink vodka, but not that much. <laughs> Miha told us Pope John Paul II is very representative of Poland. And a lot of people agree. In Japan, Yuka said, soy sauce. Absolutely. And in Vietnam, Than, Than Dok said, pho. And Hytron said, rice patties. And war. Oh, I love pho. Uh, yes, I, I also envision rice patties, rice fields in Vietnam. Thank you, Than and Hytron. And, and once again, I, I want to talk about Hytron, and he said war. And you know what? I have to agree. Um, when you mention Vietnam, at least for me, my generation, we go back to the 1960s and 1970s, and we think of the war that took place in Vietnam. And that's uh, it's a tragedy. There's so many victims uh, in that period of time. And this, everybody, this is why I want people to learn English. I, you know what? I don't care what the international language is, but so far, English is the international language. So with the internet, the world is getting smaller, and we have more chances of talking to people all over the world. And if we speak a common language... Like English, we can talk to each other about our countries and about the things that we do. And we can tell people, no, uh, yes, you know, Russia is famous for vodka, but we have so many more beautiful things, wonderful things in Russia. Matrushka dolls and samovars, those are excellent things that you should know about. And in Vietnam, yes, there was a war. And it was a devastating, horrible war. But there are so many other things in Vietnam. The beautiful rice patties, the pho, the clothing. There are so many wonderful things in all of your countries. I know that. I know in every country out there, there's something amazing, something beautiful, something that we don't know. And it requires you. It's your responsibility to tell the rest of the world about you and your country and the beautiful things in your country. What makes your country your country? Tell us about your language, your culture, your customs, your traditions, your histories, uh, your history, your inventions, your foods. Those are your things and that's what make this world a great place. So with an international language like English, that's why I'm here to help you guys do that. Okay, DDM 266. Oh, wow. Excellent vocabulary from this last lesson. It was uh, from a sitcom. Listen to these expressions. Listen carefully. Are you ready? <clears throat> Cut the crap. Crawling all over. Snack bar. In a state of disrepair. Squalor. Irritate. Rife with. Do you know those expressions? Oh, they're such good expressions. And that was just the first page of DDM 266. DDM 266 was three pages of uh, material. And uh, wow, excellent expressions. Real life English. So yeah, if you're not a member of DDM, you need to join. Perf 56 was perfect. Perf is my speaking class where we work on P, pronunciation, I, intonation, R, rhythm, and F, flow. 
And per 56, we talked about giving names or saying names and phone numbers in English. Because if the pronunciation is wrong, we misunderstand. If the intonation is wrong, we don't understand. If the rhythm is wrong, we cannot follow you. Perf 56 was absolutely perfect for teaching pronunciation, intonation, and rhythm. And Perf 57 is so excellent too. Our, our current lesson is Perf 57. We just had, in America, Halloween. So in Perf 57, I have the students telling a very short ghost story. So telling a story is not easy. It's perfect for uh, the season. That was per 56 and per 57. The top E-cubed video of the week, like versus as. I want to be like Coach Shane. I want to be as good of a person as Coach Shane is. <laughs> Something like that. Check it out. You can go to www.letsmasterenglish.com slash TV and just type in the search bar. Just type like, L-I-K-E, and then as, A-S, and you will see uh, this video. You can check it out. Uh, we, in our, if you sign up for our newsletter, we have a link on YouTube also. Uh, the top E-cubed podcast of the last week was... The phrasal verb, to follow along, that was podcast number 515. Uh, the E-cubed, by the way, was number 867. Podcast number 515, to follow along, that was the most popular. And the book club, oh my goodness, Coach Shane's book club. The name of our new book is Now I Know More. It is an excellent book. We are learning so much not just interesting stories, but so important. We are learning how to make a summary and how to tell a story. This is great fun. We still have about five or six more weeks of this book. It's never too late to join. If you want to join, you can get a free audio book from Amazon. Yes, you can. You can do that. Just go here, www.letsmasterenglish.com slash other, O-T-H-E-R, and then it says, let's build a relationship, get involved, go down, you see Patreon, and then boom, you see a big red circle with a book, that's the audio book club. Just click on that, um, and click on the red book, click on the red book, and it will give you all the information you need to find out about the book club, uh, there's a link there so that you can get a free audio book if you sign up. And we have a, a, a mailing list, a newsletter, and we have the address there too, santaraisin at gmail.com. Um, she does an excellent job every week of making a fantastic book club newsletter. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on in Let's Master English. And now it's time to say goodbye. Thank you so much, everybody, for listening to the podcast. If you have any questions about anything, you can leave a message on our website. You can also email me, dailydictationmembers at gmail.com. Join the classes, everybody. DDM and Perf are outstanding classes. I stand by them. Uh, I'll be back hopefully next week, maybe two weeks later, with another Let's Master English podcast. And once again... Thank you so much. Have a fantastic week, and let's master English!